Greetings everybody. It's such an honor that God allows us such precious moments to spend with each other drawing from his word and deepening our kingdom knowledge and exciting our spirit man to his plans and to his purposes. And we pray that as he allows us to interact with each other, that we will become intertwined. And as he connects us to his spirit, that we will understand his plans, we'll understand the way in which he wants to guide us into a wonderful and good place. And we're going to speak about not by might, not by might. And I know that quite often there are incidents that transpire around each one of us and sometimes they will disappoint us, they can irritate us and they can frustrate us and they can even stir up our emotions and and in and, and and allow our, our temperament to, to rise up. And sometimes we want to, to 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 use the might and the power that we have to fix and sort out incidents that transpire around us. But he's saying to us, not by might. So go with me in your Bibles to Zechariah chapter four, verse six. And we're gonna quickly read that as it sets the platform and the stage for where God wants to take us as well. So it says here in verse 6, So he answered and said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. And when I, I, I read this, this particular scripture, the word that really stood out for me was the word hosts. I never looked at it previously from the way God revealed it to me this time around. Because the word host, I, I sense very strongly in this particular uh, uh, scripture, is representative of an army. And, and I feel that when we grab a hold of this word, it will bring a sense of comfort to you. It will bring a sense of comfort to, to each one of us. That his word says, he's never leave us nor forsake us. And, and the host being an army reminds us that he has a strong protective edge around each one of us. And therefore, when we are exposed to circumstances in life, we should not attempt to resolve it on our own. We should not use our might. We should not attempt to use our power. But we should be guided by His Spirit. So we need to come back to that place where the Spirit of God guides us. The Spirit of God directs everything that we do and say. And I, I, I feel very strongly that there are circumstances that have prevailed around us over a period of time that has allowed our minds to operate in a particular fashion right now. But God is, is sounding the alarm and is, is requiring of us to get back into our rightful place and our rightful standing with Him so that our lives can be guided by the Spirit of God. Have you ever wondered, and I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been thinking about it for quite some time, but never had an opportunity of inspecting it uh, quite seriously. But have you ever wondered why in the movies the police always arrive at the end of any kind of activity? Any scene, any incident that has, that has transpired, the police always end up there at the end. Why the main guys in the movie always fight off the bad individuals and the police then thereafter pitch up and all they would really do is just to mop up a piece of work and and and, and take the relevant evidence and and, and apprehend the, the respective individuals but the the actual work uh, in, in in bringing order into place is done by other individuals and for me I felt that there was a message in there that was being very subtly planted and I trusted that God would give us the ability to understand it and expose it and be able to, to, to dissect it and nobody seems to even think about it or even pay any attention to it when these things happen because we are also focused in, on the movie, on the story that is transpiring and we just allow these these things that transpire to just breeze through our minds without even noticing it in any way and there is there's a particular pattern that is transpiring here in each time 
that we have been exposed to this incident, there is, there, there is an intention behind uh, uh, each time we are exposed to this because it is slowly uh, in, uh, trying to take away the power of God and the authority of God in your life and in my life. This pattern cannot be eradicated by might. This pattern cannot be eradicated by power. This pattern can only be arrested and destroyed by the Spirit of God. There's a subtlety and a, and a quietness and a stealth by which the enemy has been operating that doesn't grab our protective instincts immediately but sucks us inside an enclave of his friends so unassumingly that we are only uh, aware of it when it's too late. But God is giving us the opportunity to be able to see through the plans of the enemy. That how over a period of time he has been chipping at our mind and he has slowly been transforming our mind, molding it and shaping it into the way he wants it. But God is giving us an insight into this. It's all a carefully orchestrated plan to numb our minds to law and order, to program our minds to progressively show less and less respect for the laws of the land. And we were not able to see how this plan was gently being set in motion, in place, and 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 it was done in a manner that nobody will immediately identify it but God is opening our minds to it and he says not by might nor by power but by my spirit we will destroy we will subdue we will conquer this in the name of Jesus you see the Prince of Air has been training our minds for ages now but by but it's the image that the enemy wanted to subconsciously create in our minds. Therefore, to even witness uh, or indulge in such negative activities or even subscribe to such thinking patterns will not alarm us or send out any warning signs because the manner in which it is done is not so intrusive. And the manner in which it done, it's done doesn't get our immediate attention that we are being taken away from, from the kingdom mindset, that the spirit of God that led and guided us is being gently being removed from our, our, our life and the way we would generally conduct ourselves. You see, the gentle uh, or the gentle indoctrination, which doesn't trigger uh, any warning bells, uh, it, it felt so gentle that it didn't feel so wrong. It felt so right, but yet it was so wrong. And he has this wonderful way in which he is able to package it. And we need to allow the Spirit of God as it invading our space right now to come in and take its rightful place and guide us and enable us to be able to identify and see what is happening around us. Quite often many subtle transformation techniques are slipped in under the disguise of even humor and fun. So its intensified impact and negativity is never immediately identified as a threat to the normal or the very careful way of gently eroding the spiritual culture and the fabric of society and the individualistic spiritual foundations that were who we were, that, that, that governed our lifestyles and that's what our lives were structured around. That's how individuals uh, allowed themselves to operate on a daily basis and he so gently allowed himself to slip into our atmosphere and, and, and he's starting to, to, to move everything uh, in our lives that is God oriented and is placing into our lives everything that he has designed that looks so much like God or looks so much like it's not going to interfere with the God in us 
and we are ready to accept that and we have been accepting it over and over over the years but God is revealing to us over this period of time that we need to start to put up our guards we need to see what is happening around us and how everything of God is being subtly taken away from us and how our minds are being reprogrammed regroomed in a manner in which where God is eventually not going to have his rightful space, not going to have the, the, the plan and purpose that he originally intended for you and me becoming a re reality, materializing, materializing in each one of our lives. You see, we can sometimes laugh our way into hell, never knowing the conniving plans of the enemy. And that is scary when he can actually use humor uh, to, to actually move us away from God, to actually make us look at the wrong things in a manner that feels and seems so right. And I believe that as the Spirit of God arises in us, there will be a discomfort that will also arise in us, allowing us to know that where we are is not where God wants us to be. So this plan of the enemy has removed so much of the nature of God that was originally in our lives. When we first came to know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, when we had that salvation experience, when we had that wonderful encounter with the Father, and we had this closeness of our relationship with Him, and He was our joy, He was our strength, He was our inspiration, and the enemy has come and, 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 and He has engulfed this entire plan of God to raise us up as a powerful and strong army and he used his plan to move us away from God but even though his plans attempted to rob us of our joy God is instilling in each one of us the ability to identify the ability to see through these plans the ability to allow ourselves to strategize against these plans as well the prince of the air has allowed so much of his plans to prevail over our lives but god is saying to you and to me today no more but no more those plans are going to interfere with god's plan in your life and mine we are going to be raised up to become so much more alert so much more conscious about the things that are transpiring around us ephesians 2 verse 2 says in which you once walked according to the cause of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience that's the place we were we were controlled by the enemy and god has removed us from that place god has taken us away from that place and and yes allow us to become safe in his arm verse 1 says and you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins we were at a place so far away from the lord but god because of his love for you and for me removed us from those trespasses removed us removed us from our place uh, of sin and gave us the opportunity of righteousness gave us the opportunity to move into a right standing position with him i sense that god is pricking our minds today i sense that god is allowing a type of alertness to rise in each one of us being conscious constantly of our surroundings being so aware of the plans of the enemy that at every corner God is going to give us supernatural wisdom to be able to strategize against those plans, to be overcomers and allow the kingdom of God to have its rightful place in your life and in my life. And I believe that when we look at both these scriptures in verse 1 and 2 of Ephesians chapter 2, we're going to see the distinctive nature of sin and the, the, the love nature of God that irrespective of what he has done, he's still ready to forgive. He's still ready to heal you. 
is still ready to restore you, is still ready to place you on safer ground. And I'm believing that God is opening that door for you right now. He's giving you that opportunity right now. Won't you open yourself to Him? Won't you say to the Father, Here I am, Lord. You do this wonderful work in my life. I will give you glory and praise and honor for it. Open yourself to Him. Let His Spirit guide you. Because His Word says, Not by might, not by power, but by, by my Spirit. Let His Spirit do a cleansing work. Let His Spirit do a transforming work in you. Let His Spirit do a, 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 a guiding work in your life. Every step of the way, let Him guide you through it. It's the retraining of the minds to increased alertness that will start this recovery process, that will start the reprogramming of our minds back to a heavenly place, back to a spiritual connection. We have identified the strategy, we have identified the problem, and we have identified the perpetrator. Let us identify the God of our life so that He can start a transforming work. He can start a work that will renew a right spirit in each one of us. He can start a work that can take us into a place of being solid, rooted and grounded in Him. And I believe that if you look at Galatians 5 verse 7, it will allow your conscience to become your guide. He says, you ran so well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? The truth was who you were once. The truth is what guided you. The truth is what directed you at a point in time in your life. It says there, who hindered you? Who took you away from thinking under those circumstances? Who took you away from that kind of lifestyle? Who took you away from that atmosphere? And God is ready to embrace you. He's ready to bring you back. But the, the starting point is a retraining of the mind to increase the alertness. The book of Romans says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It is a constant process that needs to take place as we allow the Spirit of God, as we invite Him back into our lives. He knows the deviation that has taken place. He knows how and when we went off the road. He knows how far off the road we have gone. But He's ready to heal. He's ready to restore. He's ready to guide. And He's ready to give second chances. That's the God that we serve. He's saying to us right now, watch the package. Understand the detail. Don't be fooled by what you physically see or here. It's a spiritual matter. Let the Spirit of God guide you. Let the power of God become your authority. Let His Spirit become the force that dictates anything that transpires in your life. And I believe that God is ready to do a wonderful work in your life. Won't you give Him that opportunity? Won't you allow Him to prevail? over anything that is presently transforming, transpiring in your life that is not of Him, that is not of His nature, and is not of a kingdom nature as well. Bow our heads with me, even as we pray together, even as we trust God, that He will start a righteous work in each one of our lives. Father, we thank You. We thank You that by Your grace, Lord, we are sustained. And by your mercies, Father, we can find joy, we can find, find peace. And Lord, through your forgiving spirit, Lord, we can have a fresh start. A new opportunity, Lord, to make right with you and change the way we live. Transform our atmosphere and allow our spirits, Lord, to be taken over by your spirit. We thank you, Lord, that we serve a great God and thank you, Father. And we know and understand that you're a forgiving God. Help us, Lord, as we present ourselves to you today, that even though we were fooled by the enemy, and though we were robbed by the enemy, you're going to take us, Lord, and you're going to transform 
and make us new and powerful individuals. Our praise, glory and honor belongs to you in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. I want to thank you for subscribing to us, for liking our page and even for sharing it. This is such a great opportunity that each one of us have to allow the gospel to go to all corners of the earth. And if you wish to support us in any way or any form, feel free as the Spirit of God leads you. But we're so grateful that we were once again able to have this opportunity of fellowshipping with you. God bless you and God guide you.